So in this next section here, we're going to be talking about uh, radioactive decay and the fact that decay is exponential. So I first want to just show you a, uh, a graph of what radioactive decay might look like. Um, I want to make sure that um, I show you a graph first, and I think then after that it should make more sense once I show you the different equations. So this one here will represent n, and n can be the number of uh, atoms or it could actually be the mass. So we could start off at some certain spot here. Uh, so some certain amount. And this is time. So this will obviously be in seconds, or maybe it's years, or maybe it's days. Here they tend to actually use some strange units for time. But here, this right here will be n. And at some point, of course, we start off here at some initial amount. And when I say it's exponential, I just mean exactly that, that it's going to follow a curve that's going to be exponential, which means it never quite reaches... Uh, oops, I should make sure it doesn't look like it rises up again. It technically goes down infinitely close to zero without ever actually reaching it. So what happens then is that at a certain time here, uh, there's a time at which you know, this initial amount right here went to half its amount. So this one right here, see this right here, let's say this right here is like 100% of whatever it started with. And at some point, now it's at 50%. And so that means that this height right here, well, I can map over there and then I can see actually what that time is. This time we'll actually often call it um, it's normally labeled actually t one half, which means uh, we're going to label it like this t one half, which is the half life, which means it's the time it takes to actually go from an initial amount to exactly half that amount. And again, this half life right here should, if I drew it right, at least it should also correspond to another, you know, from going from this height right here to this height right here. Well, if I look at that, it should be another t one half here. So whatever time this took should take exactly that same amount of time to go down by half again. You can see if you keep going, you know, with lots of half-lives, you'll get closer and closer to zero amount, but you'll never actually reach it. So it's uh, that's sort of a strange little thing here. So I want to actually start uh, describing a few of the different equations here that we get, because there's an equation that describes all of this right here. So I'll get it on the equation booklet. So again, trust the equation booklet. Look at our equations here. We have n equals n zero e to the minus lambda t. I'm going to write that one down. Uh, maybe I'll do these in red here. So we have this equation here, n equals n zero e to the minus lambda t. We have another equation that describes the a, which is activity. So a is minus delta n over delta t. I'll write that one down. a is minus delta n over delta t. The last one is a equals lambda n, which is lambda times all this mess here. So a is lambda n, which is lambda times n zero e to the minus lambda t. I better define what these different things are. So the very first one here, n, that's the final uh, either mass, or we could actually say it's the um, number of atoms. Sometimes we're actually counting number of atoms, but sometimes we use this for a mass. N zero is the initial initial mass or number of atoms. Now what units could we use? Well, we could use uh, kilograms, we might use grams. Okay, we use a couple of different things here. That's normally something like this. Now e is just an exponential function, so that's just a mathematical uh, operator, um, so to speak. t is a time elapsed, let's say, so the time that has passed. And that can be in either seconds, sometimes they do it in days, years, whatever they decide to use. They might do it in minutes, so who knows. Um, so that's t. We're also going to need to know lambda, which is a decay constant. I'll be explaining more about that later. The decay constant. This will be measured in either um, years to the minus one, or day to the minus one, or second to the minus one, etc. cetera. Uh, then the last thing we're going to need is actually A, and A is actually the activity. So you know, when people say things are radioactive, well, they mean it's active. What this means is this is the, um, so that's actually the decays per second. That's really what activity is. 
So what kind of units could we use for activity? Well, we could actually say decays you know, per second. But we actually have a reserve unit for it. It's actually called becquerels. So BQ. So sometimes we actually use BQ or becquerels for activity. And just to show you a little bit what happens again, just to make sure everything makes sense here. If we start off with some initial amount, which is N0, that's maybe up here. And after a certain time is elapsed, this curve, you know, obviously goes down. So that means you have less atoms, or in other words, less mass of your atoms. So that's sort of what happens here. Uh, now our different equations are here, well, they relate to what happens here. So the activity is actually related to um, this change in number of atoms divided by a time. In other words, it's sort of your, your change in atoms over a change in time. If we're using calculus notation, we'd say dn dt. But this is supposed to be a non-calculus-based course, so you notice they use deltas instead. Well, no reason to get afraid here. And the activity is related to the number just by this decay constant. So activity is just lambda times n. And that means then we can take our equation here for n and just throw a lambda in front of it. That's why this right part here is pretty easy. Okay, so activity is lambda n. That means you just throw a lambda in front here. So lambda n zero e to the minus lambda t. So these equations might look a little bit complicated and we're gonna work with them a little bit. I'll show you how to derive some of the uh, stuff you need. For example, the uh, half-life equation. So speaking about the decay constant, uh, that's this decay constant here. That's actually the symbol lambda we talk about. I put this here because uh, this is an old uh, computer game but I used to love playing it because first of all uh, I was trained as a physicist so I love this game Half-Life because you actually play the physicist and if you notice their symbol that they use lambda here that's actually somewhat physics-y because they use a decay constant which is lambda. Now let's talk about the meaning of this. Lambda is actually it's defined as actually the probability this is actually really important here so it's the probability uh, that a nucleus will decay. A nucleus will decay uh, in a unit time. So per unit time. So this tells me that let's say lambda is um, I don't know 0. 0.5. What that means is then the probability uh, that the nucleus will actually decay in that whatever time. So in other words, per second, or I mean, it depends what it was, the units. If it was 0.5 seconds to the minus one, for example. Remember, we talked about the units that we use here. So if your lambda was in, let's say, seconds to the minus one, then the meaning of it would be that if I said that, for example, or maybe I'll just write it down here. So if lambda was equal to 0 0.5 seconds to the minus one, that means that the probability of a decay in one second, that's the unit of time we were using. So probability of decay in one second is 0 0.5. In other words, it's 50% likely that it will decay in one second. However, the decay constant can be totally different. What if it's uh, you know something like it's not very probable that it'll decay at all? In other words, what if it's like 0.2 but per year? Well, that would mean that it's only a 20% chance of it decaying in one whole year. So there are there do exist lots of uh, particles that have really crazy long uh, decay constants. In other words, large decay constants, and that tells you something about the half life. It tells you something about uh, you know how probable it'll be, and that can tell you something about the curve here. So in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to actually derive this uh, relation between half-life and this decay constant.